Welcome to the Restoration Group Podcast, where we are sometimes silly, but we are always serious about investing in Oklahoma City leaders who desire to integrate their work into their Christian faith. I'm your host, Clay Steves. Today, I'm joined by my co-host, Michael Mead, and our dear friend, Will Kubitschek. Will recently graduated from college with a degree in entrepreneurship and venture management. He immediately went to work on an extraordinary startup company where his goal is to impact families, specifically dads and their children. Six Summers provides the system to be more intentional, the experiences to create memories and build influence, and, oh, this piece, it's always hard, but it's good, and the accountability inside a community to ensure that influence grows. Will, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so let's go back, and it's a two-part right off the bat. How old were you when you started your first business, and what was your first business okay, you started? yeah. So I was 15 years old, and I started almost 16. Casual. I just am laughing because I'm like, you, was, you were 15 years old? It was just because I was saving to get my first car, mm. and I started All-American Auto Detailing. And so it was a mobile detailing company. Well played. Uh, hired one of my buddies who, who could drive me around, and we loaded up gear in the back. <laughs> Hold on, well, you couldn't even drive, so yeah. you're lobbying your buddy yeah. to uh, drive you yeah. to then go do auto detailing exactly. remotely? Yep, yep. And so it was, it was great. I mean, it was a really good learning experience. I don't know how much money I actually made towards that car, <laughs> but learned how to, you know, talk to adults at that age, learned how to manage customers and most importantly detail a car <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. a skill you will never you will never lose exactly so no it was it was a great experience but that was that was kind of my first look on on entrepreneurship and really inspired by my dad because he was an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and uh so you know it was like one of the things that's part of six summers is to either get a job or start a business by the age of 15 or 16, mm. that range, yeah. just to get those experiences to learn about, uh, you know, what's happening in the real world. And so, uh, we, it was, it was definitely a eye opening one and, uh, my first success and first failure, I would say. Mm. So, what? Yes, <laughs> yeah. So I was, just, you hired a friend. Did you hire any more people? Uh, on and off, yeah. kind of just like, hey, you want to come help me with this car? Or my sister would come help me sometimes. Yeah. But what were the challenges of starting a business as a 15 year old in high school and hiring your friends? Yeah. Who maybe weren't as dedicated to excellence yes. as you? I don't know. Like, what? No, that's what, 100. That's exactly yeah. what, what, right. What happened? <laughs> Where it was like, you know, not to call anyone out. But <laughs> yeah, no names, no names. <laughs> but it was, it was just like, I, it was hard for me to trust them because it, they wouldn't do as good as I thought I could do. Yep. And so just kind of delegating and management side um, was difficult. And then ultimately we broke up because of the reason, like I would be doing the, the small things and then like, Oh, it's good enough. Yeah. You know? And so just misalignment on the, yeah. on the standards side. So broke up, you fired your friend. Yes. As a high school student, you started a business, hired your friend, and then went through the experience of firing them. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. That and is then remarkable. it led to the the complete combustion of the company. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the great. experience of that is just amazing. I think that's so cool. Success and failure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just because it was like you know we didn't necessarily manage our finances very well. <laughs> it was. I mean, like that's the thing. I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. And so. Uh, Success because I learned so much, but failure because I don't think we really made that much money after all of our expenses. Yeah. And so it was just it's more of like a project, but mm. um, definitely one that I would encourage and do again. Mm. So you do it with your kids someday if you oh, have kids. Oh, for sure. Yeah, okay. for sure. Um, okay, tell me so now. Let's fast forward to now. Yes, uh, and it, I. Okay, I'm going to assume there's been other businesses since then and now as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So tell us about the current status portfolio of the businesses you have founded, co-founded, and are a part of currently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Six Summers is the main one. Okay. And that's where uh, we really have a huge heart for dads and helping them become intentional through adventure experiences, but also uh, our online platform that is chock full of these different leadership tools and uh, resources used in the business world. Uh, for dads, uh, but really helping them know what it's like to be on the other side of themselves to, uh, you know, grow in relationship with their kids, with their 
wives, uh, understanding their communication style, their, you know, just a lot of different things. And then uh, the, the fun part of that is those experiences where we actually group fathers and sons, churches, schools, organizations to go and have these experiences, whether it's out in the woods or in a new city or uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another one kind of built onto that, but on the side is called Yes Factory. And that is a digital marketing firm that I started with my sister. Uh, I'm a big part of that because Six Summers needs that. And (laughs) (laughs) so it's kind of like connected, but uh, she does a lot of marketing for coaches, consultants, and some other HR engineering companies. So Mm -hmm. doing all that. And then I also help manage a wedding venue out at our family farm called the farmstead. And so it's a, my great grandpa built it back in 1943 wow. with literally a hammer and nails. Yeah, it's, like awesome. It's, it's awesome. And so they passed away a few years back and mm. we just were like, what, what is the legacy of this place? And so uh, my wife or fiance at the time was really into wedding planning for the past three years. And we just thought, Hey, I think we can do this. And so we built a, the house is like the bridal home. There's this old dog kennel. That has now, it's, it's a lot nicer than you think. <laughs> that has now become the, the groomsman quarters. <laughs> the dog it's, kennel it's into perfect. the groomsman it's quarters? Perfect. Oh, yeah. That's so fun. <laughs> and, and then my great grandpa's old sharp shop is now the venue with, you know, a big patio. And yeah, then we have so like cool. a wedding tree and it's located in Shawnee, Oklahoma, 1500 Very acres. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So th- that's kind of the overall scope but six summers is definitely number one in that list. Okay. So number one in priority time. Yeah. yeah. All of the above. Yep. Okay. Um, where does the name six summers come from? So it's really how it started was, uh, those six summers between 12 and 13 and 18. So okay. those like final six summers of, uh, kind of that launch into life. Yeah. Uh, but now we're kind of re focusing it to where there's three different sections uh, you know, those first six years, then those middle years and those last years. Mm. And so it's like, how can we target um, just dads in general and really mm. help them? Because once you get to that 12 and 13 age, if you if you haven't been intentional, it's probably not going to happen. Catch up is hard. Catch up point. is hard. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so, uh, but the, our main focus right now is those, those years, those teenage years um, and making the most out of the, the time you have left with your kids. So. Going on some heartstrings for you, Clay. You got you got a couple kids in that uh, in that a, window. A couple of kids in that window, yep. uh-huh. and more on the way. <laughs> uh-huh. All accurate. Yeah. Where's your love for it come from? Like, where's your passion yes. behind the the theme, the ethos? Yes. Where does it come yeah. from for you? So really, it I think it was it started whenever my dad kind of made this switch, and so whenever I was around ten years old, um, he made this switch from being very, uh, I guess, work minded, you know, he was always traveling, always gone, would bring work home. He would even say he would almost like stiff arm us while we're driven the basketball, like, Hey dad, come play, you know? Hmm. Uh, but he made this intentional switch after a conversation with my mom and us about, uh, you know, Hey, where are you when you're with us? You're not here, you know? And so it's like, how are you going to make the most out of this time you have? And, uh, I have, an older sister who's two years older and a younger sister who's two years younger and I'm 23. And so whenever I was around 10, older sister was 12, younger sister was eight. He made that flip of, okay, I'm going to actively pursue my family in an intentional way. And I got to watch that. Mm. And I don't think it really hit me until I was probably around 14, 15, 16 to where I was like, you know, what would my life be like if my dad had stayed kind of in this workaholic mindset, if Mm -hmm. you will. I mean, that's probably a little extreme, but the, where would it have directed me and my life would be completely different. And so just the ways he invested in me, uh, really I'm the, the first Guinea pig of six summers. Mm. That's where it's created from is what my dad did with me. Now, of course it's a lot more structured now, but, uh, (laughs) you know, everything from here's the people you want to meet or he wanted me to meet. Here's the skills to learn. Here's the kind of the track, the goals that you want to accomplish. And we built that together. And it really helped me with a developing mind to be like, okay, you know, what do I really want? Who is, uh, you know, how to, how to pray, how to speak to the Lord, how to, you know, so we really focused on mind, body, and spirit. Mm. And so how to get your mind right, where are you at, you know, physically with your body, but then also most importantly, where are you spiritually? Mm-hmm. And so having um, 
almost an apprenticeship track, if mm-hmm. you will, laid out was something that really struck me. Um, especially once I got to college, it was like, oh, wow, you know, a lot of these mentors I'd met with, I was like, oh, my dad told me that. Oh, my dad told me that. But I just may have not listened. And no. so uh, the real, I think, inspiration was watching my dad shift from accidental to intentional. Mm. And then also I've always had a dream of having a retreat center or some place where people could come and experience, be, and kind of get away, but learn in the process. So that was like, very vague, but now six summers has kind of morphed into that dream Mm -hmm. of, you know, we can go and, and take fathers and sons, families, uh, groups and, and have life changing moments, but also these experiences that will latch on and Mm -hmm. they'll remember forever. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where the, the, I guess, desire came from. And then, uh, we, we work with can cut camps and we did a father son camp with them and actually getting to watch it real time. You know, I get to speak to the sons. My dad would speak to the dads and they come together mm-hmm. and it's just like, Whoa, you know, there's some life changing opportunities. So I think just giving those kids what I got from an intentional father and helping dads not only be a dad, but move into that friend realm after they graduate call or after they leave the house, it's like, how do you create that lasting relationship? Mm-hmm. Not just a, Oh yeah, you're just my dad. Mm-hmm. You know? So, um, I want to go back to like you and your dad are just tooling this together as you're going through those years. And then now you've looked back in hindsight to create a real intentional structure and plan for someone that this is a new concept or new idea to like, what are some of those practical skills that you guys have, you know, landed on that a dad needs to make sure their kid is equipped with by the time they leave the house. Just, just reel off a few. Totally. I think a couple are, um, a big one is just knowing what it's like to be on the other side of yourself. Mm. So knowing how people see you and then that really allows, um, different tendencies, habits, and, uh, really just things that you notice in your life to pop up. And Mm -hmm. if you can be self-aware by the time you leave the house, it's going to (laughs) be so, helpful going on. So we use different tools, like knowing your personality, knowing, um, a big one is called know yourself to lead yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that is, you know, knowing those actual tendencies, Hey, why is this happening? So my actions lead to these consequences and then a reality. Mm -hmm. What is that cycle? And it allows you to really track that Mm -hmm. and and understand yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then a big one communication. So whether that's communicating to adults as a kid, communicating to uh, your parents or even your future spouse, um, Mm -hmm. knowing, you know, really how to communicate and speak other people's language Mm -hmm. is a huge one. Mm -hmm. And then also we have a bunch of fun ones that, so it's like we, what it, what it looks like is going through base camp, which is kind of more of a, you know, getting ready for the climb. So a lot more in depth information kind of going through those hard tools Um, that will kind of rewire or set you up for success within Mm -hmm. six summers. And then we have a badge system that has a bunch of activities, trips, uh, skills for dads to basically take and be like, okay, I want to do this with my kid. Mm -hmm. And it might be um, anything from doing a concert swap to uh, learning uh, who your friends are Mm -hmm. to um, running a race together. So it's just all of these different things that dads can pull and pick together for ideas, yep. but they're full of, Hey, think about these conversation starters. Think about, um, you know, all of these different metrics that may help you increase your influence with your kids, but mm-hmm. also develop that relationship in a fun way. Yeah. It's what, not cheesy. What is a concert swap? So a concert swap is basically you take, you pick a concert as a dad and your kid picks a concert. Oh, and then okay. You're, you're, okay. You're, you're switching. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's probably not going to be the same day, but for sure. A period of time, and you got to go all in. That'd have been fun to do with my dad. Like I'm, yeah, t- my yeah. dad would have been like Righteous Brothers, and I'd have yeah. been like Bone Thugs and uh-huh. Harmony back in the day. Yeah. So it would have been quite the. Uh, so who's your concert? If you're doing this with your oldest Clay, what what concert are you picking? Oh, like right now? Yeah. Oh, if I'm yeah. doing yeah, this with Noah months. right yeah. now? Oh, glory! I don't know. <laughs> I don't go to concerts. Uh, I would, I, you know, you know who I'd want to go to Matt Stansberry in the romance. Okay. That's who I would okay. want to take him to. There you go. And, man, I'm trying to think what he would pick right now. Yeah. I don't know that answer. Maybe I that's need to fun. ask him that. Yeah, that's, that's fun. What was your concert swap? Did you guys do the concert we've, swap previously? We not, or we've done it a long time ago, okay, okay, okay. but it was like, uh, 
switch foot switch maybe, foot? Oh, and yeah. need to breathe. I don't yeah, know. Sure. Something like that. Yeah. Stuff that we would probably want to go to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I would want to yeah, go yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's so. cool. That's really yeah. good. That's really good. But it's it's full of different badges. Uh-huh. Just sure. short, yeah, yeah. you know, cooking a perfect steak, having a <laughs> obstacle course in the backyard, yeah. you know, whatever it may be. Um, but really uh, having those those put in place for dads to be like, okay, this is what I'm doing when. And then we also have like rites of passage, mm-hmm. which are, you know, 13, becoming a man, becoming a woman, you know, doing this yeah. ceremony with mm-hmm. people you yeah. respect. 15 is starting a business. 16 is that year of freedom, getting a car. Mm-hmm. And then 18 is the launch. And, you know, there's stuff plugged in throughout there. Mm-hmm. But how do we partner with dads to become apprentices and uh, really help them be successful in their parenting in a fun way. Mm-hmm. I anticipate there are very few dads who would say they don't want oh, the yeah. outcome that you are building six summers to totally. help create. Right. I mean, I think For there are sure. very few, and again, th- there are going to be some, but there are very few who would be like, no, I don't want relationship with my kid once they launch. No, I don't want my kid to learn these things, et cetera. What do you think is the most, or what have you seen as the most common gap between yeah like the intention Mm -hmm. and then the actions of dads Mm -hmm. that um, even led you to, to start this, create the framework, et cetera. What do you see as the most common reason for that gap in dads? Yeah. So a a really, how we explain it is almost like a dimmer switch on people's backs and it's moving from accidental to intentional Mm. because you may want to be intentional, but you're living in this accidental realm of Mm. I mean, that's the thing is like, if you don't do anything, you're going to be accidental. So it's the the matter of doing something. You're not going to get it perfect. By the end of it, you're still going to feel like, hey, man, I probably should have done things better, but Truth. that's everybody. That's every, and so it's it's everything. Like, it's every everything. It's every relationship. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so yeah. it's like moving. It's it's really actively putting in the time and effort to, I, I think, become more self-aware as a dad, but then sacrificing that time for your kids, for what they want to do, and discovering who they are rather than who you want them to be. Mm -hmm. And so hold on, stop and say that last line again. It's like, that was really, really good. (laughs) Like figuring out who they are, who they're created to be, not who you want them to be. Yeah. Cause I mean, Mm. that's just history. You know, Oh, my dad wanted me to be a doctor. My dad wanted me to be a lawyer. You know, that's in movies, that's in everything. And so it's like, but how do you unlock your kids to be the best possible versions of themselves? It's like, you've got to represent that and you've got to be that. So moving that switch of intent, being moving from accidental to intentional is an easy beginning, but it's not a, it's not an easy road because Mm. I mean, even for any, anybody defining those points of like, okay, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to actively pursue my relationship with my wife, with my kids 24 seven. It's not going to be perfect, but having the switching the mindset of, okay, you know, this is how much time I have left. How do I make the most out of that? And, you know, it may be through six summers, it may not be, but instead of doing nothing and being that, the typical, I guess, couch potato dad, um, if you can step into that realm of just giving your kids time, being for them, letting them know that you are fighting for their highest possible good, Mm -hmm. it's going to elevate your influence for dads, but also your relationship during this process, but also post, Mm -hmm. post college Mm -hmm. or sorry, whenever they leave the house. Yeah. So if I'm listening to you right now and I'm like, man, I am not sure if where I'm at on that spectrum, mm. if I'm accidental, intentional in between, what does, if I'm in, if I'm living in that like accidental fatherhood, what does my life look like right yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah. So it may be, um, you know, you go to work and you come home and you go to bed or, you know, it's like, you know, bringing work home yeah. continually, uh, kind of, not being very involved with your kids, Mm -hmm. uh, not being on the same page with your wife. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, really, I I would say if you were to look at accident, being accidental, it's just how it sounds. It's like, you're just living the motions. Mm -hmm. You're on an inner tube floating down the stream, not grabbing for anything. Mm -hmm. And you're just letting life go by. It may be great at work, Mm -hmm. but is it at home? Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, uh, one thing we talk about is the five circles of influence and it's going through self, you know, family, and then grows out into the larger communities. Mm -hmm. So where does that start? It's like, if you're being accidental with your family, if they're not necessarily the, 
priority one or you feel distant from them, um, it might be that you've like, it starts with self. So that's what kind of how we focus with on it with six summers is how do you become the healthiest version of yourself or begin that process? Mm -hmm. And then it overflows to your spouse and then your kids. And so it's like, how do we put dads back in the center of the household mm -hmm. to be the, the true leader that they're called to be? Yeah. Um, but that, I guess, accidental frame is, uh, is if you're not, not doing anything to pursue, sure. um, you know, what you've created. Yeah. So practically that might look like you're working late at the office yep. consistently. You're not prioritizing family dinners and mm -hmm. everyone just kind of eating dinner on the couch or doing fast food. You're watching sports at night instead of engaging with your kids. Like, yes. I'm just trying to think about what are yeah, some yeah, of the behaviors yeah. where I may not identify as an accidental dad, but if I'm doing an audit of how I spend my time, because it's it's a you talk about awareness like I think awareness mm -hmm. is probably the first step in someone realizing that they are not living into the intentionality that that they could yeah I think if if you're saying yes to everything mm. Mm. that would be another potential like when's the last time as a family you thought through a decision of like a commitment or a sport yep. or a you know a program or whatever and you yep. said no mm -hmm. because of the fact that it was prioritizing presence together as mm -hmm. opposed to everybody. Be, and again, I've got a big family. Um, so it, it, it can be different scales, but sure. like, when's the last time you said no? Because yeah. I think mm -hmm. it would be accidental because yes is easy. Yeah. Yes. And, and all these yeah, things, are, yeah. all of them are good. Rarely are any of these things bad. It's just when we commit to it. So maybe you're yeah. overcommitted yeah. by mm -hmm. the fact that we accidentally drifted into yes on everything. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. trying to get to the symptoms. Yeah. Like what are yeah. the, the realities? Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay, Will, how old are you? You I'm, said it earlier, 23? Yeah, so I'm 23. 23. Yes. Okay, ask your question that we were processing on earlier because yeah. I think it is a really good one. We're talking about dads because yeah, really, yeah, I mean, yeah. we are speaking to dads right now. Yeah, sure. We could be speaking to kids to be leading yeah, yeah. up and saying, hey, dad. Actually, I want to pause on that. You said it when you were 10? Yes. The, the, the shift happened with your dad. Yeah. You also said there was an element of your mom drove a conversation, mm -hmm. but you guys were also involved in this conversation? I mean, not I know that one directly, but, okay. you know, we were a major part of yeah. kind of that shift. Yeah. So I, I think we are uh, likely talking to dads yes. in this scenario, yep. listening 100%. to us, yeah. and maybe they're identifying it, and they're like, that's great, Will. Are you a dad? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> so then, then yeah. it's like, okay, so, so maybe give the, you know what, take the moment to share your perspective on yeah. why you and I, for the record, I want to back you up. I believe you have the authority to speak on it, but why oh, do you have the authority to speak to dads for sure. about this program and your business mm -hmm. Yeah, for them to then go begin to shift how they live and behave? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So yes, I'm not a dad, but I am a son. And so it's like that, that process of watching my dad go through this Come on. is, was like literally why I'm doing this today mm -hmm. and why I set out on this journey because it changed my life. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I'm not necessarily the guy that's going to be speaking to dads, but I get to be that middleman between fathers and sons, which is such a cool experience um, because that's kind of a, a lot of guys in my life were that as well. You know, it's like, hey, your dad knows the best for you, but you're probably as a son or a daughter, you're not going to be on the same page as them. You're probably not going to listen to them. And so whenever someone else says that, it's like, whoa, okay, wait, my dad said that. And it just kind of builds on. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so we have a group of, of other dads and including my dad that are kind of the wisdom and I get to be the middleman. Mm -hmm. uh, but also it's like, I've kind of dedicated my first true job outside of college into fatherhood and, and really this, uh, I mean, it's been described as an epidemic of, mm -hmm. I, I mean, distant fathers. And so just watching, just learning and continuing to w watch the outcome of even some of my friends' relationships with their dads, uh, but more importantly, like just dads in general in our country and everywhere else, it's like, you know, the statistics go up on, on you know, if you're going to be uh, dropping out of college or dropping out of high school, teen pregnancy, drugs, prison, even they're, they're about, they're a little bit under, but about the same as if you didn't even have a dad at all, mm. if they're just distant. Mm. And so it, it's called orphans at home. And so it's like, you know, you have a home, but you're still an orphan. And so that's the thing that's really struck me. is like, I feel like 
yes, definitely the imposter syndrome a lot, but also the, okay, who else is going to be vouching and, and going after these kids that aren't being supported by a f- functioning family, you know? And so, uh, I think we can have a huge impact on the future and an impact on dads to, you know, really raise up and launch their kids to create a healthy system of a family and fatherhood mm-hmm. and fellowship and just all of these different um, characteristics and attributes of, of, you know, what it looks like to be a, a great dad, yep. you know, going forward. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you've, you've mentioned the experiences that six summers have, and then you also just mentioned, you kind of have a group of dads Mm -hmm. that you call the wisdom, which is, which is cool. So just briefly help someone understand like, okay, I've got a 13 year old. I want to go on one of these experiences, like functionally, how does that dynamic work where you're involved as you're calling yourself the Mm middleman, and then you've got um, this group of wisdom, like mm-hmm. just what, what does that look like? If I'm yeah. the dad, what, what do I expect out of that experience? Totally. Yeah. The, so what it looks like to go on a trip is first identifying who you're going with. And so is it you and your family? Is it you and a group of other fathers and sons, fathers, daughters, whoever that may mm-hmm. be? Um, or is it like your entire school, your entire church, you know? Who, yeah. Um, so, and then, so basically we have a travel agency built into six summers that once you're a member of Six Summers, you can uh, go and use it however you want. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you're taking your anniversary trip or mm. doing a uh, just a trip with your son. You know, it's like doing that. But then we probably specialize more in those group trips. And so you can, we'll imp- empower you to go and take one on your own. Mm-hmm. And we'll give you everything you need from intentional travel to the different kinds of dinners you're going to do. Literally down to, hey, on your one-on-one time walking Here's the questions to ask. Hmm. So giving dads exactly what they need if they want to use it yep. uh, based on the age of their kids and, you know, where they're at. And then you have the option of bringing a, like a guide, me or someone my age around, around my age to kind of facilitate and mm-hmm. lead mm-hmm. and also, and uh, kind of an ambassador or a, a sage, if you will, yep. one of those older guys. Yep. And so that's, I think the perfect trip looks like, you know, you have a group of dads and sons or just a group of people that are going. Um, and, and first of all, you can do a trip anywhere you want. Sure. We have, we have connections and recommendations, but it's like that retreat can be anywhere. Yep. And then, so then the process works is like, we'll come with you and lead facilitate and kind of make this experience a six summers experience. Yeah. And so I like to say it's not a vacation. It's an experience cause you're not going to be rested afterwards. <laughs> yeah. You know, we focus on mind, body yeah. and spirit. And yeah. so it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And it sounds like you've got, like you're there representing a guide role, but you're also not the singular person yes. teaching all the, totally. if there's content that's being taught. There is someone who is a dad is further ahead that's yep. helping facilitate. Yep. And, um, and then you get to be the connection point with the kids, which I'm sure you can do a little better than someone old totally. like clay <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah but yeah that's a, the the mix of having a someone my age and then someone yeah, a, a dad's right. age is yeah. the perfect combo yeah yeah and very so cool. that's how we like to do it very cool what role um does pursuing uh one's wife play in the six summers like thought process framework for dads. Yeah. So like even you mentioned it a couple times, mm-hmm. I feel like it's kind of like sprinkled in, Yeah. but like what role does that play mm-hmm. for, um, a healthy father to son or daughter relationship yeah. over this window of time that you're trying to get intentionality? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'd, I'd say that's one of the most important aspects is being able to model a healthy marriage, healthy relationship and, uh, being able to talk about it as well. And mm-hmm. so, um, having a, really equipping dads in base camp is like they're, they're going through it with themselves. Then they go through a section with their wife and then they go through it with their kids. Mm -hmm. And so going through it with their wife, it's like, okay, you know, you are gardeners. And so understanding, um, you know, how they're cultivating their kids is, is a big one. And then also, um, understanding their communication to each other, but also communication to their kids. And so I think the big, big thing is like once once uh, the parents are on the same page, it's like a game changer, especially for 
on their unlooking kids on on an example going forward. Mm -hmm. And so a, another analogy we use is like, you know, you got to grow with your kids. And so this is a huge thing that you you can see just with parents in public is like, are they growing with their kids? You know, my kid is going 14, 15, 16, 17, but I'm here mm -hmm. at 13. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, typically it's like one parent will go for, go up and then it's like, they've got to be on the same wavelength. Yeah. How are you treating your kids? Are you holding them back or are you helping mm -hmm. them go forward? So I think the, the aspect of growing with your kids is essential because your kids are going to notice it and not necessarily know that you're treating them younger, but they're just going to be like, Oh, come on, you know, I'm, I'm growing up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah. So six summers really targets the dad, um, as leader of the family developing, uh, leading the charge in this, I guess. Yes. It, yeah. So it is, it is the dad, but the mom is just as involved and sure. just obviously just as important, if not more, if any moms are watching. <laughs> well, and that's what I was going to ask. So <laughs> all of you moms who are yeah, listening, that's right. more. So we, we, more. we do have moms listening. This yes, is in yes, a yeah. male focused podcast. Yeah. So, so let's say there's a lady listening right now mm -hmm. and she's thinking my husband needs this. Yes. And maybe she's observed that, um, her husband is not being an intentional father. Nag him. That's the best yeah. way to get yeah. him to do something. Just start That's nagging right. him about so it. So we'll right? keep that on the shelf as yeah, an idea. Let's not um, use that one. As a, we'll just keep that on the shelf. <laughs> how, how would you speak to the mom who is like, maybe she's even mm. like praying That's and laboring and just is hungry to see her husband step into mm. that. Yeah. And he hasn't yet. Mm -hmm. How would you advise or counsel them to bring an idea like this to the family? Yeah. And I think that that's like the perfect scenario for six summers is because it's like go on a trip. It doesn't have to be a, so like mention, Hey, let's go or let's all do this family trip or mm -hmm. let's do, uh, you know, I think it'd be really good for you and Jimmy to go on this together. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, once you, once dads experience it, mm -hmm. they're locked in. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, for moms really, probably going after more of the experience side rather than the, the, the platform is great, but if you went at it and you're like, Hey, I think you need to do this, you know, it might come off the wrong way, Yeah. but, um, actually diving in and, and doing an experience with us or jumping into the platform and getting in on the badges and actually planning out, yeah. Hey, you know, I really want to do this with you or, you know, these different things. But I think actively it's, it's having that conversation about, being intentional versus accidental. Mm -hmm. I know I keep saying that, but yeah. it's like, okay, as a, as a wife, where do you see your husband? Where do you see his potential? And then how do you, I mean, depending on him, how do you call him up into that? Mm -hmm. If it's, oh, hey, there's this awesome trip that you can go on, or hey, there's these really neat badges on this platform that mm -hmm. I think would be great for you and Jimmy, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Yeah. Well, and looking back on your own story, it sounds like your mom was yeah. really the catalyst for some of the changes in your dad's 100%. life and that it was a positive return. Yes. Um, and so even it sounds like what started there was she just had an intentional conversation with him and she was able to do it in a way where he um, listened and didn't get. Cause I think as men, sometimes we can get combative oh, and like, sure. like defensive. Yes. Um, and perhaps if we do feel insecure, that might be a, a response to get defensive. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I was just thinking through how, how to do it in a way that leads to the fruitful outcome that I think everyone is desiring. Mm -hmm. Um, Clay, what, you got something to add on to that? Yeah. Uh, just creating balance yeah. or balancing cause we're never in balance, right? We're always balancing, but just to ensure, cause I think I was even just falling in the thought loop because your mom played a critical role. We were talking to moms, wives there. Mm -hmm. It's dad's responsibility. And yep. so I just want to like ensure that we're not putting an onus on oh, to, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, know, I know we're not, but I'm just yeah. re-emphasizing that sure. to ensure that like every dad listening recognize like we're the ones who have to have extreme ownership mm -hmm. and we yeah. get to step up to be intentional. Yes. That's our role. Yes. And so I just went as husbands first and then mm -hmm. as dads. And so yeah. yeah, just bringing that into balance to make sure Yes. I drive home that emphasis. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. And I think there might be Agreed. some women listening that feel yeah. on an island by themselves. No doubt. And maybe just feel like they're running in circles and don't know how to um, get the, the change that they want. Yeah. I, yeah. So 
I think it's, book, the, it's the paradox. Yeah. It's what we're talking about uh, a lot of integrating yeah. uh, work into faith and the challenges of those pieces is yeah. ensuring we're we are looking at all all parts of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, will you manage a lot? You got multiple businesses. You're helping uh, lead and influence um, dads who are then trying to be intentional in their space. Talk to me about pick one discipline in your own life that. Um, tease you up the best to be able to handle lots of things. In other words, yeah. multiple businesses, multiple opportunities, multiple relationships, all these pieces, because a lot of the dads listening, likely some of the pushback towards being intentional is how much I got on my plate. Oh, yeah. I, I don't have time, man. Like I, I can't, like I don't even mm -hmm. tell me to go on a trip. I can't take off from work. I can't leave. Yeah. What's a discipline in your life that allows you to manage a lot? Um, that's most impactful to doing that in a healthy, thriving way. Yeah. Um, it's probably something that I, I snagged from my dad. Uh, but it's really like, I think, getting into the right mindset of, uh, you know, something we focus on is like sonship. And so it's like you can't be a good father until you're a good son. Kind of off topic. But the the Go with it. it's like sonship, what does that mean for me? How, do, how am I a, a son to my heavenly father. Mm. And so it's like not only my father, but my heavenly father. And how do I get on the same, same page for his path for me rather than my path? So, you know, my name's will, and this always pops in my head, but it's like, what's my will versus God's will. And so it's like something that uh, we do is called examine. And it's really at the end of each day. So it's solving the problems and issues and pros and cons for the day today so that you can be fully ready and alive for tomorrow. And so it's, it really starts with uh, going through, you know, Hey, where was I, where was I off today? What do I need to reconcile? Uh, where, what was good? Um, you know, and then whatever was off or, or good, it's like calling yourself up to be like, okay, Hey, this is what I should do. Oh, maybe I need to apologize to this person. Maybe I need to talk to them. So solving everything for today so it doesn't build up, build up, build up. Mm -hmm. And then uh, something is called, or at, at night, he calls it rest in peace sleep. So it's literally praying like, Spirit, would you, like, Lord, would you, uh, you know, work on me as I'm sleeping? Mm -hmm. And he sets, you know, I don't always do this, but he sets like a tone over his, uh, over, over the night. So it's like, hey, the theme is, is joy. Theme mm -hmm. is love. The theme is, you know, whatever he's feeling. And then the morning, that's what you start with. Mm -hmm. So it almost creates this process of instead of scurrying and hurrying and continually being on the hustle and bustle of life to where you look back and your kids are gone mm -hmm. or, you know, the years have gone by, but rather slowing down and, you know, worrying about today, not tomorrow, and having those uh, moments of, in my mind, it's like solution so you're solving it now, and then you can let it go or, mm -hmm. or almost advance to the next instead yeah. of being overwhelmed and ready to roll. But another thing is uh, the five gears. And so it's like we use the five gears for everything in life. So it's one of the tools we use in six summers, and it's really how to manage your time. So first gear is recharge. Fifth gear is like I'm in the book grinding. And so it's kind of that range, yeah. and it allows for um, – great switching of hats between those things, yeah. which is probably the biggest part of that tool is just bringing the awareness of what gear am I in? Mm -hmm. And maybe more importantly, what gear does this situation demand of me? Exactly. Uh, or another way to say that is what gear should I be in? Yes. If I'm at home relaxing with my family, I might not need to be in fifth gear yep. unless it's an intense game of spike ball or something. Totally. <laughs> exactly. I'll get in fifth gear for that. But yeah. We use that as good common language uh, at one of our companies, Habakkuk, mm -hmm. which is an orthopedic device distributorship. Before we would go into surgery, we would use that language because we had read it with the surgical mm -hmm. team about, okay, we're putting in the fifth gear. Because like yeah. when you're going in surgery, yeah. you want to be that's in fifth, right. gear. fifth gear. Yeah, yeah you want to be locked in and that's like singular focus of yes. what you're doing. But it would also allow us when you left surgery to be like, okay, decompress mm -hmm. out of fifth gear for a little bit and then transition back into yeah. it. But the common language piece. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Practical, the examination. Is that what it's called? The examination. Examine. The yeah. examine. Mm -hmm. um, like, is this a, I'm getting into bed and I do the examine. I get home from work and I'm doing the examine. I'm talking to my wife at dinner and we do it. Like where yeah. does the examine it's, happen? It's really like, like on your way home, Kay. I think is the best. Kay. So it's like, how do you prime the pump for getting home? How do you leave work? at work and, and prime the pump for home. Yeah. But 
um, a lot of guys will do it at, at five or whenever they get off driving home, you know, really solving those things in your head. Mm-hmm. And it's a book. It's a book called Examine. Okay. So it's not, we didn't create this. Okay. Um, I don't know the author, but if you type in Examine, it's a tiny little book and it's really great Yeah. because okay. it just, I think it helps you get on the right, right wavelength, but also just, just mindset and, and locked in with the Lord in yeah. yourself. So. Yeah. And we, so we've mentioned your dad a few times. Now his name is Jeremy. Jeremy has been a guest on our show before. Let's go. Um, I don't know if you listened to his episode. It's funny to me. He talks a lot about this practice. Does he really? Uh, okay. Yeah. So it's awesome. like, well, you obviously like you're uh, drinking the Kool-Aid, you yeah. know, like yeah. it, he has passed that down to you and you're living it out. But we can also link that episode in the show notes because we do spend a good bit of time with him talking about how he applies that practice. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's probably way more in depth than <laughs> what I just said. I don't know about so. that, um, but it, it was a big topic of that episode. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's just, it is not lost on me that you both talked about that. Um, and we didn't plan that. You didn't yeah, know no, that. Didn't so know. it's a cool little Easter egg yeah. that's uh, going that's on awesome. for our podcast listeners. Okay, so we've talked uh, we, uh, we've talked about your dad a lot in the conversation. You brought him up, we brought him mm-hmm. up. Um, you obviously work together and then have relationship together. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe give me one lesson learned, one yeah. practical thing, whatever you want, because a lot of people um, there's a lot of stories of the mess of family business mm-hmm. and family dynamics in business. Yep. Um, you, Share something that you've learned to keep healthy boundaries, the right level of integration, so that you are talking about your dad in a positive way yeah, yeah. when you talk about it. And yeah. he talks about you the same, like, so, um, speak on that for a moment. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think it's, it's where we use the tools that we teach in our entire life. Like I was the guinea pig my entire <laughs> life for most of these tools. And so... Uh, a huge one is like our personalities. Yeah. So the five voices is the personality assessment, mm-hmm. really easy. And uh, we are complete opposites. Mm. So my dad and I are just on the opposite sides of the spectrum. Just kind of if we can, we can butt heads. But I think the biggest thing is understanding. Yes, understanding that voice, that language that your personality speaks, so that I know. Okay, you're saying this, but you don't necessarily mean it that way. And so just being aware of of who he is and how he comes across. Mm -hmm. Um, Another one is like provision, plan, and promise. And so it's like, hey, you know, I'm going to speak an idea. It's either provisional, it's put into the plan phase, or it's, hey, this is 100% happening. So my mindset with my personality is like, if he says something, that's a promise. Mm. And so that was a huge thing we had to get over. It's like, now he's like, hey, provisionally, I'm just saying this, yep. you know, or, hey, we're putting this into the plan stage. That's really good. Um, or, or hey, you know, this is a promise. I, I think one that sticks in my head is like, he came into my room one night. He says, hey, I think it's going to snow tomorrow. And it didn't. And I was so mad at him. Because <laughs> I thought it was a... I love the way your face was as he told that story. That was so good. You're, You're still like, mad I was, right I'm now. so mad. mad at him. I was so mad at him. Because <laughs> I, I saw that as, oh, he knows it's going to snow. It's going to snow. Yeah, dad knows, <laughs> dad know? knows everything. Dad knows. Oh, yeah. I still got to go to school. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So. Um, That's awesome. I, I mean, but what I'm taking from that sincerely is that there's no magic secret sauce besides the fundamentals of yeah. healthy communication, totally. self-awareness, collective awareness together, humility, yes. being a student of each other, mm-hmm. all these pieces, yeah. but doing it and together. Uh, yeah. And that's the thing is like, it's not something that just happens. Yeah. It, it's going to take years to build this relationship. And dads know this. Yeah. You know, it's like you're raising a, a mini you. And, and preparing them for life. And God help like, the world if I'm raising mini minis. <laughs> I call my oldest mini, so I get oh, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, do you do you talk about business? Like, say you got invited over for dinner, you and your wife. Do you mm-hmm. talk about business at the dinner table if you're invited over? Oh, oh, over yeah, to, to their house. house? Yeah, if they invited you over yeah. for dinner, or is that like a? I mean, I think we if we're having dinner, the main conversation absolutely will not be business. Yeah, yeah. it'll be something way different. And yep. that's the other thing is like. I think my dad is the king of having those intentional conversations. Mm. So doing it like you okay. always have something to talk about, but then my mom and I over on the side, we'll be talking about the wedding venue or like, you know, oh, what's this, what's going okay. on? So yeah, okay. yeah. maybe on the side, well, but I think, I think the balance is, is great so far. Yeah. And we've Very always cool. done projects together, 
but now it's like actually doing business. Um, you know, they're just large no projects. horror stories yet. But <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. Yeah. It's just life. <laughs> it's yeah. life together. Yeah. Mike, you got any final questions you want to ask? Man, or comments? you you made a comment that I just want to speak to because I totally understand how you might feel imposter syndrome and what you're setting out to do. And I I. I hope I've told you this over coffee before, but just on the air on record, like I think what you're doing is amazing. I think you're equipped and called to do it. And at restoration group, what like we are fans supporters. Yes. Like how can we help six summers accomplish what it's trying to do? Um, and I, I think God has put you here to do that at this time and like, keep it up, uh, put the imposter syndrome to bed and just keep going. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. You got any final thoughts for our listeners and viewers that you want to share or anything you want to talk through? I you? mean, uh, you know, if you're interested in Six Summers, yep. sixsummers.com has all the information on there. And uh, if you need to reach out, you can reach out through the website. Yep. Happy to happy to talk, happy to hang. Sixsummers.com. We'll link it in the show notes. People Let's will go. be able to find it. Absolutely. Yeah. Man, well, thank you. Yeah, you, thank uh, you. You you have a, we talk about courageous authenticity. You just let us behind the scenes. You share it all. And I really do appreciate that approach. Uh, and I know it connects with dads and I uh, love the structure and, and well done. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Of course, to all of our viewers and listeners, thank you for joining us this week. And until next week, choose life. Thank you for tuning in. To find out more about how Restoration Group can serve you or your business, click the link in the show notes below or go to restorationgroup.co.